High Grade Gundam Age 3 Fortress. Hey, what's up again, everybody? Robert184, 2Rs2Bs, GundamReviews.net, and you've seen everything from the unbox to the parts to the mobile suit form of this Age 3 Fortress. This is the advanced grade. The Transform 1 is spinning around behind you. And before Keo steps into the Age FX, here's my final thoughts on this high grade, the last of the leads to be released in HG as far as we know. To keep them transformed here for the negatives first, and perhaps there's a correlation there, but just in terms of the unbox, you're going to be pretty pleased by what you see. The purple is going to be good, but it's definitely not going to stand out compared to some of the other bright colors that we've seen across Gundam Age. Anyway, it just sort of seems like it does blend in ever so slightly with the gray that makes up the rest of the body. And when you're looking around the package, unless you look really carefully, you may not even see that there's two colors on the guns. However, it's still, of course, better that they actually go ahead and do that. 1800 yen is going to be getting you a chunk of plastic, but if you consider for only about 800 more, you can get something as massive as the Byarlins. Well, I suppose you may just feel it's a, a, a little bit at the high end of the low end high grades, if you want to put it that way. As we're talking about, definitely a big step up on the old 1000 ones that kicked off the first generation of Gundam Age. But in terms of the big money here for not necessarily that big a guy, well, perhaps it might just give a few people pause. When you talk about construction, you're going to have to be a little bit careful here that you put in all the yellow pieces in all the right ways because some of them are, they're going to feel like they don't go in all that well, but actually they're going to do a very good job of staying in and Bandai's done a pretty ingenious job of getting things like these ones, even though it is only going to be one piece of yellow to actually look like it's going to be a little bit more. For the shoulders themselves, they do just feel a little bit loose as he moves around. The upper body is going to lock into place almost better when he's got that little fake part on the front which is going to have a couple pegs to plug into the top of the waist section there. And then when you move up for the big issues with the mobility, are right there with those four big guns, and that affects it in both of its modes. The Sigmas's cannons up on the shoulders, they're going to move about 80 degrees up in the air, and about 10 degrees left and right, which is a little bit disappointing, because you'd think that with the fact that they're going to put a polycap there on the inside and give you tons of different options... Uh, it just seems with construction that if you're, they're going to give you a fancy bend mechanism that they could make one that would allow it to go all over the place, have a full 180 left to right and full 90 going up and down, that would be great. I mean, you could even rotate it around if you wanted to have them shoot backwards or something like that. Just seems like the uh, possibility was there and they just sort of missed out on it as well. Down here as well, you're also going to have pegs down there that are going to be completely underutilized. And by that, I mean non-utilized. And you're just going to be taking those big guns attaching them on underneath and it is going to be a solid connection no complaints about that you'll actually have a little bit of trouble on occasion taking them off but again it's just the kind of thing where it seems like it is wasted somewhat there is a peg under there they could have given the option perhaps of just having it locked in there with a the square one or you just pop off the purple part or twist it off to the side and just have a peg and then it could have just been rotating on a polycap and that would have allowed a bigger range of motion down there left to right and just set up for some more dynamic poses but the biggest issue ultimately though is going to be that you can't really twist the arms forward because if you want to bring the arms forward and I'm just bringing talking about bringing the bicep and the forearm up that's going to send the cannons on the back back up in the air 90 degrees so they've got to be pointing straight up and you're going to have the old wing and a gun kind of thing which is not going to be great you want to have all four guns up not with just a derpy 90 degree and bend with the elbows so it just seems that the big guns his big big draw and it just seems like they didn't connect as well as they could have Finally, if you're going to talk about bad things, you got to look at that transformation itself. Definitely less inspired than some of the awesome ones that we already saw in the second generation. Between the normal and the double bullet to a lesser extent, and the Dark Hound with his pointy ends definitely going to be working out well there. But this one, you're just going to have the legs bend down here. I don't know if the purple sort of accentuates it. I do love the boosters there, although you have to wonder if they're not going to be hitting each other and the toe bending there, but it's when you take a look at the front, and you're just going to have the four guns there, and again, zero mobility. They're going to be completely locked in, even awkwardly so. It's just going to be a little bit pinching there, and the fact that you've got no rotations means that unless you're dead ahead of this guy in a battle in space, well, you're actually probably pretty safe unless he just flies past and bumps you. But is it all bad? Definitely not, as even just this not-so-great area pose can show off He's just got so many possibilities. First of all, let's start with the unbox where, yes, the purple is not quite as bright and vibrant as it could be. However, it's definitely purple and it's definitely on a lead Gundam, which is going to set him apart for all sorts of reasons in the right direction. 
But even more pleasing to go along with that is the fact that you're getting not a little tiny advanced grade size AG or uh, like an AG yellow plate that's only going to have three, four pieces on here, although the Fortress actually did a good job of having even more. But this guy here is going to have tons of yellow plates, and you're not going to have hardly any sticker wraps there. All the color is going to come from plastic. That's what you want it to be, especially at the end of the generation there. And where is it going to stand out so well? On the bottom of the legs, on the sides of the skirts, where one piece is going to look like two. And then you've got all that important part up there on the shoulders, again duplicated with the AG. And they even went to the trouble of putting it on the front skirts, where unless you actually have them popped up, which you could do if you wanted to have a big blasting pose or something like that, you'd actually make out the ones underneath. Most of the color that comes from seals is only going to be those purple ones on there. And for me, they could be take it or leave it. Uh, I'm talking about the waist section there, as you can see it's spinning around. If you wanted to take those off, I don't think you'd be missing out because he's got all the right colors in all the right rest of the places. And that comes down to the fact that the chest and head section is so well designed and that core fighter is going to add a lot of bulk and coolness onto the back. In terms of posability, the legs, despite the fact that they're bulky, they can do different stuff all over the place. They're going to be interesting to put together, if a little bit hollow, but who really cares when it's all put together for a non-master grade there. The silver seals are a nice touch, and the tiptoe is good for the transformation, but I think it's even better for aerial poses. Big bulky waist section there with, again, lots of little gimmicks and lots of thrusters all over the place, and the arms are going to move, and even though I complained about the cannons, they are going to get to most of the places that you want them to go to, and pretty much no matter what you do, as long as you've got two of them pointing in the right direction, he's going to look intimidating and cool. But when you combine the fact that it's not going to feel repetitive in terms of the build there, because you're going to have the chest and the head section is just a treat to put together. You're also going to be getting that base there, which is just a lot of fun, and we're getting used to this with age kits. The kind of thing that you definitely wouldn't have gotten with old school high grade kits. But it's going to have multiple attachment points there for the core fighter and the G-hopper. Those you can even actually move up and down there. It's going to look good either way. Throw in the extra manipulators underneath, which they are going to give you two new ones in the form of the closed fist. Definitely the right choice for him, even though he's not going to have anything held in them. You wonder if they'd actually do anything like that with the Master Grade or not, if it ever does happen. But nonetheless, it's going to look good, even if you want to go with the open hand, and they're going to give you things to do with it. You're not going to have too many extra parts for the transformation, like the hip section that we saw for the H2. You're just going to have this one, but it's not going to look all that bad, because they throw in the clear green parts, as we've gotten used to with the normal. But ultimately, with this guy, you can do all sorts of fun things. I think he's going to look really good on the ground, very Titus like when some of the bodybuilder type poses that you can do with just the big guns going blah, but especially if you have him up in the air there, even though you're not going to have the range of motion that you want, pretty much no matter what you do with him, he's going to look colorful, interesting, unique, and powerful, which you can guess, can lead you to guess that of course I'm going to give a positive verdict to this guy. It was sort of wondering whether we were going to be getting him for a while there in the summer as there was no word. Following up on the news that we were going to be getting the normal in the orbital, as expected sort of early on, but when the FX came out, however, this guy came out at the end and you have to wonder if he was going to be the weak sister. Double bullet perhaps, maybe sort of the least if we're talking blast impulse of them all, but eventually he got his high grade and it was worth the wait because it's a fun build, very poseable, and just lots of fun things that you can do with them on the ground or in the air. Ignore the G-Hopper if you so choose, but ultimately he's going to look like a very cool, very souped up CeraVe, and the kind of thing that I think will catch the eyes as just the big, bulky power type. But it's on to future speculation where the news may not be as good for these three, which is really a shame when you consider just how dynamic and fun they all can be, and how cool it would be to have them all in master grade form. Because the news that came out after we got all three versions of the H1, and I'm sure Bandai was watching their sales quite carefully, they got the H2 normal, which is fantastic, followed up by the Dark Hound, definitely more popular than the Double Bullet, you'd think. But when they skipped over the Double Bullet, then the question was going to be for the H3s, would they skip over one or two of the other wares? And it just seems that when they announce H3 normal and the HFX, but however, we've already seen that we could be getting the high-grade HFX, or we already did, before we're going to be getting the high grade fortress so perhaps we will be getting a master grade of at least the orbital the orbital definitely seems like it's got a lot of fans out there maybe i'm just speaking for myself and just sort of uh, extrapolating that onto other people or projecting it however uh, it seems like the fortress was definitely the weak sister upon first impression but building up the high grade just makes me want to have a master grade all the more and when you consider that you can have lots of fun with the double bullets and all of them out there and maybe even a grantsa depending on how that high grade is going to do when it comes out on sale. 
Anyway, it just would be nice if Bandai doesn't skimp out on these three, and we don't have to wait 10 years, if ever, for them to come out. Anyway, everybody, why don't you let me know what you think of the high-grade H3 Fortress in any of its aspects, price, build, posing, and everything like that, and just sheer looks and coolness. And as always, why don't you let me know what you think of the videos, the verdict, and everything else with a comment down below. Thanks, as always, for watching, and stick around for lots more news, reviews, there's not that many more high grades coming out from Age. I wonder if we're going to have to wait for a re-release in 10 years for all of them to come out. Nonetheless, it's been a lot of fun putting these leads together, and I'm very happy to have all the high grades on my shelf, and I think that you'll want to add this one to it as well. Thanks for watching, everybody. See ya. I see you back there, biting my style.